A question that many have wondered for years. Is there any truth to any of the alien, UFO or out of this world sightings which for decades, even centuries, have never provided enough evidence for a society to collectively accept their existence in the first place? As we know the idea of contacting aliens or getting any footage has become a hot commodity. So naturally, as is the case with anything of value, a lot of fakes have tried to make money off of a potential opportunity. This unfortunately soured the idea and made it that much tougher for professionals and the general public to decipher fact from fiction. With all that being said, over the years a handful of situations have occurred, leading us to believe, well, we may not be alone. Photos and videos of unexplainable things happening caught on camera more than once will certainly have you scratching your head. Today in LBQ, we're asking, have we made contact with aliens? Smash that like button, and if we hit a thousand likes, maybe, just maybe, we'll get an alien on the show. Who knows? I'm just saying, not yet. I'm just saying, you never know. Now, before we dive into this video, I want to give everyone a forewarning. By the end of things, you may never see life the same. I can't, you know, you can't say I didn't warn you, but as Joey Diaz likes to say, we're about to go deep. Ooh, I don't know if I want to get into that thing. So as you can imagine, this is a hot topic. Over the years, some professionals have claimed that we've made contact, or at least seen proof of alien civilizations, only to be ridiculed. Others are under the belief that aliens are out there, but they don't feel it's the right time to make contact with us. That doesn't mean we haven't made contact, but you know, maybe it was just like brief. But there is a reason for such theories. Of course, there's also those who think the idea of aliens in general is insane. And then there's me, who thinks that even if an alien walked up to us, the neuralizer would completely erase our memory. You know, like from Men in Black, like the little flash and then you forget everything. Can anyone explain deja vu? Think about that. Maybe it did happen, but your memory was erased. Sorry. Sounds wacky, but I'm just saying. And no, you can't explain deja vu, because you guys are watching me. So you guys can talk to the screen all you want, but I can't hear you. so good luck. As we all anxiously await this report to be presented to Congress, everyone is curious as to whether or not there will be any evidence or proof of aliens. Now just because there isn't concrete proof or proof that aliens exist or have contacted us doesn't mean they aren't out there. It also doesn't mean they haven't contacted us. It's possible we just didn't realize at the time what was going on. Oh yeah, we're going deep. In December 2020, a former Israeli space security chief explained that governments have been working together and in contact with alien civilizations, however, humans aren't ready. Haim Ashed, the former head of Israel's Defense Ministry Space Directorate, told the local newspaper, I quote, There is an agreement between the US government and the aliens. They signed a contract with us to do experiments here. Unsurprisingly, some didn't feel this was the most credible source, as Ashed also claimed American astronauts were meeting with the alien representatives from the Galactic Federation, as he referred to the aliens, in a, I quote, underground base in the depths of Mars. Now with all that being said, another philosopher, Adrian Rudnick, who has been researching UFOs since the 80s and claimed to have close encounters with extraterrestrials, also believes that we, as a society, are not ready for aliens. It seems he thinks as a civilization, the aliens don't see us as advanced as other civilizations, thus they haven't even bothered to outright make contact with us. In his book, The Assessment, The Arrival of Extraterrestrials, Rudnick takes a more philosophical approach, not focusing much on UFO data, and instead exploring the idea of what we should expect from aliens arriving on Earth and what our relationship with them would be. Now a common belief when thinking of alien contact is that we literally see them face to face in the flesh. And that's what I think, which is why my whole neuralizer idea makes sense. At least to me. But maybe contact with aliens isn't necessarily us seeing them face to face. Maybe it's not them landing a UFO on Earth and coming down a ramp with laser guns. Maybe instead us making contact with aliens is something as simple as evidence of their existence, confirmed by unexplainable stuff going down in space. As you can imagine, that's what happened. And Avi Loeb, who is known for his controversial takes, had yet another hot take, which led to him being ridiculed by some peers. However, he makes a very compelling argument. Loeb is a Harvard University astrophysicist who has studied black holes, gamma ray bursts, and other very complex yet interesting space subjects. However, just as importantly, he's focused on finding alien life. And in 2017, a potential breakthrough may have occurred. An object was captured by a telescope sitting atop a volcanic peak in Maui, which has since been named Oumuamua, meaning scout. Among the scientific community, it would be called an interstellar object, and was something never seen before. With the way it moved, its odd shape and varying brightness, as well as the speed at which it was moving, collectively it was agreed upon that this was something far beyond our solar system, kind of just passing through. 
Of course, it could be anything. Some space junk, an asteroid, maybe a star, aliens, you know, just whatever. To no surprise, at the time there were tons of different theories, and one of the less popular but more controversial ones came from Loeb, who, as you can imagine, suspected it was aliens. Loeb's findings alongside Harvard postdoc Shmuel Bialy were published a year after the initial discovery in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. The two potential explanations included that it could be debris from an alien civilization, or an intelligent piece of technology, aka an alien probe. And given the odds of debris from an alien civilization moving the way this thing did, well, all evidence pointed to this being an alien probe. And while writing in a blog for the Scientific American, Loeb pointed out, I quote, In contemplating the possibility of an artificial origin, we should keep in mind what Sherlock Holmes said. When you have excluded the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. To no surprise, the idea made Loeb a bit of a star, as he received a lot of media attention and even had offers to make a film about his findings and career. Others in the scientific community were a little bit rattled by all that, as Paul M. Sutter, an astrophysicist at Ohio State University, wrote, I quote, No, Oumuamua is not an alien spaceship, and the authors of the paper insult honest scientific inquiry to even suggest it. A phrase which was popularized by one of the most well-known astronomers of all time, Carl Sagan, says, I quote, Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And given that for Loeb, his evidence is that the other theories presented don't make that much sense, well, that's not a very strong theory. However, he argues the phase, which is often referred to as the Sagan standard, explaining, I quote, It is not obvious to me why extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Extraordinary conservatism keeps us extraordinarily ignorant. Further expanding on this idea, Loeb said, I quote, If we acknowledge that Oumuamua is plausibly of extraterrestrial technology origin, whole new vistas of exploration for evidence and discovery open before us. Now, as crazy as it sounds, it is possible that perspective sometimes really does stop potential discoveries. Never thought of it that way, but that truly is crazy. I mean, after all, we're only human. Maybe that's why we'll never actually know if we make contact with aliens. I didn't even talk about the invisible alien theory, which, I mean, the name says it all, but really, if that was the case, how would we know? How would we know? If they were just invisible aliens, like literally right here, you guys wouldn't know, I wouldn't know, producer Chris wouldn't know, nobody would know. We wouldn't know. As always, guys, let us know your thoughts down below. Do you guys think we made contact with aliens, or is this just some wishful thinking? As you can imagine, people have their opinions. For now, let's do some common replies from the video. Top 10 scariest American mythic monsters in history. Sean Jones said, what about the Jersey Devil? Prob the scariest one. There was a few of you guys commenting about the Jersey Devil. I could do an updated video on the Jersey Devil. I was trying to include some new ones that we haven't covered on the channel. Sorry, we've done videos on the Jersey Devil. We've done videos on Siren Head, which is the next comment from Joseph Carville, who just said Siren Head. I wanted to kind of like switch it up, give you guys some new stuff, mix in some old stuff. But I could, we could do a part two if you guys want, like part two scariest mythic monsters. That was a fun list, and you know, there's no real right or wrong because it's kind of just like they're all scary, you know. JT Taylor said Slender Man really had a year in 2015. It was more than a, it was a time. It was more than a year. He, it was crazy. Uh, all that that stuff that happened, like I think that's potentially why it makes him one of the scariest on that list because someone actually, more than one person, like a few people, did things saying that the Slender Man told him to, and it's, that's in itself is just messed up, so. Anyways guys, that's all for this one. I've been your host, Pepper, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye.